Problem 4.20 in Miller deals with the case, a real court case from the 60s known as Peoples versus Collins. And this, uh, this example is really in there to illustrate uh, the danger of prosecutor's fallacy. So, uh, so in that case, uh, there was a couple on trial and they had a certain characteristic which only one in 12 million people had, so this couple overall. So, so we're gonna define P to be one over 12 times 10 to the six. And uh, we're gonna think of P as the probability that a randomly drawn couple from society uh, satisfies this given condition, whatever it is. And uh, uh, so, so the goal was, this was a crime that took place in LA area, and so there was a pool of, uh, they claimed, eight million people who could possibly have committed the crime, or eight million couples who could possibly have committed the crime. So we're gonna let little n be eight times 10 to the six, okay. So uh, just defining a couple events, A is going to be the event that at least one couple matches the description, and B is the event that at least two couples match the description, and E is the event that exactly one couple matches the description. Now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the probability of B given A. Now the reason why that's important is because uh, for the couple on trial, what's interesting to know is what's the probability that some other couple in the population matches the description, given that we know this one couple at least matches the description. So that's the probability B given A. And uh, we're going to calculate it just using the definition of pro conditional probability, P of A intersect B over P of A. And uh, we're also going to know at this point that A intersect B is actually equal to B because it is a more restrictive uh, event that at least two couples match the description than at least one couple matches. Okay. So to calculate all the quantities in this ratio, uh, we start out by noting that A is the union of B and E. So in order to, for at least one couple to match the description, there's two possibilities. Either exactly one couple matches it, which would be the event E, or at least two people match it, which would be the event B. Now these are disjoint events because we can't have exactly one and at least two happening. And therefore we can calculate the probability B using the third axiom of probability as P of A minus P of E. And uh, P, A and E turn out to be much easier to calculate. So to calculate P of E, uh, we note that there are N couples in the population who could match the description. So that's the N in the front. And then if I pick on any one couple, so let's say the first couple, the probability that they match the description but all remaining N minus one people do not is P times one minus P to the N minus one. Now for A, uh, since it's the event that at least one couple matches, it's easier to calculate the probability of the complement, which is that no couples match the description, because that event just has probability 1 minus P to the N. So by the law of complements, P of A is 1 minus 1 minus P to the N. Now B then, uh, from our, our previously derived result, is going to be P of A minus P of E. So there's the expression for that there. And then returning back, zooming out a little bit, our, uh, our goal, remember, was to calculate P of B given A, which is the ratio of P of B to P of A. And when you plug in uh, the numbers, uh, P is 1 over 12 times 10 to the 6, and N is 8 times 10 to the 6, we end up with a probability of about, you know, about 30% chance that there's at least two couples given that there's one. So, so there certainly have to be more evidence to convict uh, the couple just then that they meet the characteristic.